Hi, this is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and what we're going to do with this video is I'm going to show you how to set up an automated strategy. I get these questions quite a bit of, of how do I set up my automated strategies, and all an automated strategy is is once you place your order in the market <clears throat> um, and your order is executed, then everything else manages itself automatically from that point forward. In other words, um, you can break your or your trade up into multiple orders. Let's say you trade three contracts. You can have three different stops. You can move your stops. You can uh, have different targets, and it's all automated. Everything moves itself automatically, and it, it serves a couple of purposes. Uh, one is that your orders go in very quickly after your order is executed because your exit orders and all that go in instantly. And that puts you early in the queue and a lot of times will allow you to get out of, you know, exit a limit order without prices trading through that limit order. And more, normally, if you understand limit orders, prices normally have to trade through those um, orders to fill them. But what I've noticed using, limit, um, using the automated strategies is that it must get me in the queue very quickly and very early because... Uh, if you've watched any of my trade demonstrations, you see I get that I exit quite often on a limit order without prices ticking through. And generally, if that happens, that's just a sign that prices are going to trade through there very shortly. But a lot of times they don't, and they reverse from right there, and it becomes a four-tick failed entry. And that's not a good thing at all because if prices reverse on you, there's a good chance that they're going to go more than two points in the other direction, and that's going to stop you out. So... Um, when you're scalping and you're trading and you're trading the ES, trust me, that single tick can a lot of times make or break you. So that's one key point. But the second one is, is that you do not have to manage your trade. And so you're not thinking a lot, should I be, where does my stop go? Where does this go? It's all automated. So it keeps you from monkeying around with your trade and making, um, uh, mental errors that cost you and that's a big part of trading that's one of the hardest parts of day trading is trying not to make mental mistakes so uh, once you place your order and if it's executed everything is automatic and you just let the trade manage it itself and you're not toying around with the orders and moving them and you know and I can't tell you how many times I even once I've gotten my order there in the beginning I would move it a little bit and inside that was stupid move it back and then what did I do I, I I take myself out of the queue early and put myself further back in making it that much harder for me to get out and those are just dumb mistakes that you don't want to make once your order is there you don't want to move it uh, especially if it's a limit order and the reason being is the sooner you're there the earlier you are in the queue and, you know, you'd be surprised when prices reverse real quick here or there, how many orders will pile up right there at the same places. And by you having that automated strategy, they're in there quickly. So don't move your orders. That's, that's a, you know, unless you know that you have to move your order, unless there's a good reason, I don't move my orders because, you know, what I'll do is if i got a limit order up here and I decide I want to get out earlier maybe, I'll go ahead and put in a, a new, I'll take it off automated strategy and put a new exit order where I want to go just so I don't have to move my limit order in case I change my mind again. So it really is that critical. So keep that in mind. But let's uh, let's get to it. We're already three or four minutes into this and I haven't even started talking about automated strategies yet. First of all, you have to have your chart trader properties on before you can set up an automated strategy. In order to do that, this button has to be clicked here you got to click on this button and what that does is you see that little drop down button if you click that again my drop down button's gone it was, if that drop down button button is not there you can't get into your automated strategy so make sure you click that yeah, wrong button click this uh, if you highlight it it'll say chart trader and then just click your chart trader and that opens up your chart trader properties or it gives you your button so you can open it and there you go open it up and notice how mine is red. I did that for a reason. You can customize Ninja Trader. Just right click here and there's your chart trader properties. And you can make this stuff all whatever you want uh, customized. And, and the reason I make mine red is because I can't tell you how many times I would come in here and, and they're set to look just alike. And the only way you know is if you have SIM here or if you have your account number. And the good thing about that is you can SIM trade 
you're the same data that you're live trading. So you get it's like trading the real market with the real traders and everything else. So that part of it's great. But you don't want to be confused and think you're live trading and, and finish your day thinking you made a thousand dollars and find out you were in sim mode and didn't make a dime. And I've done that a number of times. I can't tell you. Maybe I'm the only one dumb enough to do that, but I've done it. And uh, and so what I did was I came in here and changed my simulation colors. You see it right. And again, the way I got that open is you come over here and you right click and then choose chart trader properties and left click. And it opens it up. And I just changed that to red. So now there's no doubt in my mind when I open this thing up, if it's red, uh, I'm going to be sim trading. And if it's not red, I'm live trading. So and I think it's light gray or blue or something like that. I can't even remember when it's live. But uh, but another thing you want to change is you want these these general items. You want to say P&L display currency. Uh, or actually it's parameter type. It's important that this say price because if it doesn't, what does it say? Yeah, if it says ticks or percent or whatever, it will throw off your automated strategy from the way I'm going to show you how to do it. So make sure it says price, uh, profit and loss. Uh, I like to see currency. I don't want to see percent or points. I want to see currency. And uh, I want to see the actual profit and loss that I realize, so I make that true. But anyway, set it up however you want, but just make sure if you're going to do it the way I'm going to show you here that this says price. Uh, I believe that's what that's the key right there and just hit OK and uh, now let's show you how to set up an automated strategy the first thing you want to do is make sure you go to custom here this needs to be in custom mode and so because what we're going to do is set up a custom automated strategy so then this little box here with the little buttons the little dots on it click that and it opens up this um, now we can set up an automated strategy. You know, you can, you know, maybe you want to trade two contracts. That's all you're willing to trade, and that, and I suggest that's all you trade until you've done this a while and you're consistently profitable. But let's say you you could do three or four, uh, five, six, up to ten. But what I normally do, no matter how many contacts I contracts I trade, I trade at least two, and I scalp out part a portion of my trade. And then I, I go for more points on the second part of my trade, and I move and I tighten my stop so I can't lose money. But let's just say in this case I want to do four contracts, so uh, change that to four, and we're going to have two targets. And uh, and you see this changed here, so somehow I changed something. So see how that's in monetary value right there? I I want that to be. So we got to go back to chart trader properties. And change this to maybe this does have to be ticks because yeah we're doing ticks so apply okay see if that did it yeah now we got ticks there okay that's what that's what it has to be ticks because we're trying to use ticks because I'm showing you I set it up for the ES because that's generally what I trade now we set it up with four contracts um, but let's say I want to two targets I want to scalp out of you could scalp out of one and go and leave three runners or you could scalp out of two and then leave two runners or you could scalp out of three and leave a single runner whatever you want to do but I like to do 50 50 normally what I will do is scalp out of 50 to 75 percent of my contracts and then leave the rest for runners so in this case I'm gonna scalp out two and I'm gonna leave two for runners our stop loss will always be eight ticks never more than two points uh, in the ES for me so both of these will start out with a two point stop which is eight ticks so we make that eight uh, our profit target will be one point on the first two contracts so I'll make that four four ticks is a point in the ES and let's say I want to go for three points on my runners so I will make this 12 ticks and uh, if I save that is it okay now then I would have a strategy that uh, started with an eight eight tick stop or two points and uh, once I went four ticks it would scalp out of two of the contracts and then I would leave two more for a runner my stop would remain at eight ticks and uh, but let's say I want to move my stop to break even after I scalp out of two of these so I would need to change my stop strategy for the second part of the contract so go over here and click custom 
and let's assume, as you see there, it says auto break even ticks. So since I'm scalping out at four ticks, and I want my stop to move to break even after I scalp out, I gotta go to four ticks. But guess what? I gotta actually make this five ticks because I'm exiting on limit orders. And the reason it's gotta be five ticks because if you just go with four ticks and prices move four ticks and you don't get out of your limit order until it moves five, then your stop is going to move to break even at four ticks and you're not going to be out of your first set of contracts yet and you're going to be moving your stop real close and I've made that mistake and prices tick back real fast and stop me out at break even, heaven forbid, uh, and then go right back to where I thought they were and go higher. So you don't want that to happen. Uh, you want to make sure you at least get out of your first set of contracts so you got to make that five now if your target on your first set was eight ticks you would need to make this nine if your target was 12 ticks this would need to be 13 but the reason is we're exiting on limit orders and if you don't understand that you need to do some research on orders because that should be basic for most traders but understand that because we're exiting on limit orders we got to add one more tick to our profit trigger before we move to break even or our break even profit trigger now, if we're happy just moving to break even, we save OK and we're good to go. Uh, but there's some other things we can do here. Sometimes I like to go to break even plus one tick. If that's the case, I'd go break even plus one. If you want to, you could go break even plus two or three. But if you go to break even plus three, then your your stop moves all the way up to one tick below prices. And uh, you get stopped out almost instantly. So you don't want to get your stop too close. So break even plus one is probably about you know, the most you want to do, but generally I'll leave mine at break even. But if, if it's a real choppy day and the odds are I'm going to get stopped out, I may go to break even plus one. That way I still give myself three ticks to play with to go higher, but in case prices back up real fast, the worst I'll do is I'll, I'll make my four ticks on my first set of contracts, but I'll still make a single tick off my second set of contracts, meaning I'll still make an eight dollar and something per contract profit. Uh, based on what I pay for my commission. So so that's the possibility. But let's just say you want to keep it at break even and you don't want to go break even plus one. But let's say you also, every time prices move another point, you want to lock in another point of, of profit. So stop loss plus four. So every time, this, this is a, your auto, this is an auto trail. So now Every time we move four ticks, my stop will move again. So it always locks in for another point every four ticks. So that way you, you don't give up any. But usually I'll leave this at zero, and I'll manage that part of it manually. But you don't have to. You can even automate that. And let's say you want to wait until you get two points, so you'd make that eight. And um, so you do that for your first set of kind. You really won't want to do it for your first uh yeah, that's what you would do. That, this is for your remaining contracts. And then you got a frequency. Um, you could do your step two and so forth, but we're, we're just worried about, we're, we're doing ours in two steps. So uh, one set, we're going out at break even, or we're going out at four ticks, and the second set, we were wanting to move after four. But let's just say we're not going to move ours at all. But hopefully that makes sense to you. And remember that anytime you're not sure what something, how to do something, Ninja Trader on their site, just go to ninjatrader.com and they have videos on how to do everything. I mean, that's how I figured all this stuff out was playing around with it and going and watching their videos. So at this point, all I want to do is uh, scalp out of my first set at four ticks and move to break even. So all I got to do is set my auto break even to five and I don't change any of this other. I don't want a trailing stop and I don't want to break even plus one or two or anything like that. So I leave that at zero. And I just go, okay, that takes me back. So now it's set up, and now you got to save this and give it a name. So get over here in this little gray part and right-click and click Manage ATM Templates. And it may have a name in there, but, but it's blue now. And you just give this a, um, a name. So let's call it Automated Strategy Example because that's what it is. And uh, But you could name it Scout 4 in the ES. What, you name it whatever you want to name it, uh, but then save it and just click OK. And so now we come over here and we click on our 
little drop down button and there it is automated straight strategy example and it's there so if I click an order down here you notice it says buy limit four and as soon as that order is executed it will automatically put a a safety stop of eight ticks or two points down here on four contracts and it will put a target limit order exit at one point for two of them and then it'll put the other one at three points up here for the other two and all I got to do then is just let it manage itself or uh, generally I will not manage I will not change anything on my order until I've scalped out now after I scalp out I may manage the trade a little different I might move this target I might decide to lower it if prices are really stalling right in here and I don't think they're going up to here I'd probably move that order down to here or I might just start tightening my stop along the way up behind every second bar or every couple of bars just to lock in my profit but I generally will not monkey around with my trade at all until I've scalped out of the first set of contracts and the reason being is that I can't tell you how many times I monkey with a trade and it, you know, because I start thinking and worrying and saying, hey, maybe I messed up. I start doubting myself. You know, once you've made your trade decision, put your order in there and stick with it and go with it and you'll be better off. Uh, at least that's what I've found. So, but anyway, that's how you set up an automated trade strategy and uh, it's fairly simple to do. Just make sure, again, in order to get into your uh, your uh, chart trader you got to make sure you come over to your chart trading button and click on it and, and as long as you're if you're seeing that drop down button right there you're in chart trader mode and if you don't see it you're not in chart trader mode and all you got to do to get there is click on that button and there it is okay i hope you um hope this is helpful to you and that you can find a you know that you're able to use it to set up your chart and um, until then we'll see you next time this is Mac with priceactiontradingsystem.com